Bluetooth is king in the wireless personal area networking or WPAN space. In January 2008, the Bluetooth industry celebrated the fact that more than 1 billion Bluetooth devices had been shipped since kickoff in 1998. Management and development of the technology is handled by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, or SIG, a trade association with more than 10,000 member companies. Bluetooth may have already enjoyed a phenomenal growth rate, but it doesn't stop there. The SIG is now implementing a new version, known as Bluetooth Low Energy Wireless Technology. This solution comes about as the result of a successful collaboration between leading lights in the technology industry. How so? Well, in October 2006, Nokia launched a low-power wireless personal area networking technology called Wibri. In June 2007, Wibri became part of the Bluetooth ecosystem as an ultra-low-power extension of the technology. This version, now known as Bluetooth Low Energy Wireless Technology, is the subject of this feature and differs in some significant ways from what we know today as Bluetooth. The biggest differentiator to other technologies is that Bluetooth Low Energy will get access to mobile phones and computers because it will be a relatively small add-on to the classic Bluetooth already in there. The proprietary technologies have not been widely accepted by mobile device market. It's, it's the connectivity to Bluetooth that you get with, uh, with the Bluetooth Low Energy. Bluetooth Low Energy is the first open and therefore interoperable short-range radio technology. Cost of adding Bluetooth low energy to standard Bluetooth devices is very little and so the potential market for Bluetooth lo low energy is huge. We in Nokia believe that um, Bluetooth low energy technology will be a mainstream solution uh, in mobile devices. So Bluetooth low energy consumes a fraction of the power compared to classic Bluetooth or other technologies competing in the same space. It is also the first open standard technology connecting mobile devices or personal computers with small button cell battery powered devices such as watches, toys and medical and sports sensors. Standards are important if high volumes are to be achieved. The standardizing uh, ways of connecting is really important and that is why uh, Bluetooth has been so successful so far, because it is a standard. If there would have been proprietary headset solutions, for example, I'm convinced that the market would have been much, much smaller today. I automatically think of how many units have actually been sold. And typically a standard would sell a billion units, for example. And if you look at Bluetooth, well, we've sold it double that. A lot of these people are just waiting for a standard to go in that direction. I think that uh, from consumer point of view, it's very good to have a standardized uh, technology because uh, it actually gives consumers more choices. They can pick up uh, devices from different manufacturers and they work with each other. Proprietary wireless technologies operating in a similar field will be obviously limited by this. We're not changing our business model. We are still low energy, and this is the only standard low energy solution that has been available. So, who will we see implementing Bluetooth low energy wireless technology? Well, the Bluetooth SIG has identified a number of different groups of companies, and they can be separated into tiers. Tier 1 companies are product manufacturers in key industries, such as sports and fitness, healthcare, watches and mobile phones. Today, some of these manufacturers are already producing products or solutions based around low-power wireless technologies. Initially, it's uh, the watch that I think is really compelling, using the watch more or less as a remote display for the mobile phone. Uh, seeing when you have incoming calls, deciding whether you want to take the call, uh, looking at SMS messages, etc. To have a watch that you can actually see who's calling, etc. And this exists today, only the fact that it uses too much battery because it's Bluetooth. The cell phone is the obvious uh, initial target, and for little extra cost, you can integrate Bluetooth low energy. I'm really looking forward to applications uh, that kind of help me to avoid carrying several devices with me. 
applications are only really limited by your imagination. If I would be able to control the music player or my calls from a nice, small, good-looking fashion watch, it would be great. Remote health application, I think, is also very interesting. And, of course, uh, sports and fitness, which may be uh, the first applications that come to market. I think uh, uh, seeing uh, Bluetooth Low Energy built into clothes, clothes is a real uh, possibility, and I don't think in too distant future, yes. In healthcare, where there is also some overlap with the fitness sector, the two largest markets are blood glucose meters and blood pressure monitors. The SIG has aligned with the Continua Health Alliance, which has set out to establish a system of interoperable personal telehealth solutions. The health industry is highly regulated, though, and the support of organizations such as Continua can help speed the acceptance process. CSR has always had uh, Bluetooth silicon within a few hours of the specification being adopted. There is already Bluetooth applications in that industry and it's quite quickly grow growing. One very important thing is uh, collaboration with Continue Alliance. Continue Alliance is really a number of companies within the medical area that's gone together and are trying to standardize or specify uh, technologies to connect various medical devices. It's uh, a really small path from the sport wellness to the consumer health. CSR demonstrated Bluetooth Low Energy in the middle of April this year, so we're pretty close to having silicon ready. The next group, or Tier 2, would be product manufacturers in industries such as toys, gaming and entertainment, the automotive sector, and office and mobile productivity. And then we have Tier 3, which is product manufacturers in industrial and home automation and the fashion industry. These sectors offer huge potential, but today are probably the furthest away from implementation. So, where do things go from here? Well, the SIG has started up a Bluetooth Low Energy Wireless Technology Evangelism Committee. Outside, it's working with mobile operators such as O2 and Vodafone to promote the opportunities for the mobile phone industry, as many of the proposed applications will provide a gateway to the Internet. Having sports equipment that could also connect directly to your cell phone and then to the internet to have a, a internet service, that, that sounds, sounds interesting. The wide range of new application areas for Bluetooth Low Energy will really open up some exciting new markets for us. Dual mode devices become a gateway between uh, uh, single mode uh, Bluetooth Low Energy devices and uh, different kind of services, web services or uh, teleservices. This uh, enables real-time sharing uh, of physical condition or, or some environment, uh, environmental uh, data. For example, if you uh, are doing, well, you're out and running and um, you're collecting data, heart rate probably, which is interesting, distance, speed, uh, and so forth, and then you want to uh, save that data, then you can automatically connect to the internet through the mobile phone. So the mobile phone or possibly the computer if you do it at home. And then uh, additionally you can share that in communities. I think you know, communities are, uh, web communities are becoming more and more uh, important these days. And so I think that is a really natural uh, evolution as well. According to global market research company IMS, the total available market for low energy wireless connectivity in 2008 is 4 billion units. IMS predicts that it will be built into 100 million mobile phones in 2010. That's an attach rate of 8%, and then into the majority of mobile phones in the next five years. The cell phone market will remain very important, but Bluetooth low energy wireless technology will expand the potential market far beyond the classic Bluetooth market of the cellular handset and headset. I really early saw the, the benefit of going to a low power technology and I think this will definitely take the mobile phone to the next level. That's what I think. We in Nokia believe that consumers will see very many new, very exciting and innovative applications and services when the Bluetooth Low Energy technology comes to the market. We'll be able to have low energy devices with uh, lifetimes measured in years. Definitely, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy will be a big boost into many new areas and I'm really excited to see what will happen.
be in no doubt that the Bluetooth SIG will pursue its goals with some vigor. The SIG is confident that with the Bluetooth Low Energy Wireless Technology solution, it is securing Bluetooth technology as the long-term choice for wireless personal area networking applications.